Good morning. Today we'll be doing our Chapter 9 test review. A box of peanut butter crackers contains 12 individual snacks. The total number of individual snacks, which is S, is equal to 12 times the number of boxes of crackers, which is B. So my independent variable is going to be B, right? My independent variable is B, which is the crackers. And my dependent variable is S, which is the individual snacks. The equation that represents the relationship between the variables is going to be S equals 12B. Snacks equals 12 times the, the um, crackers. So you can always think about it as your dependent variable is always your answer, and your independent variable is what it takes to that you have to change, or you have to add something to, or multiply something to, or divide something to by um, to get your answer, to get your dependent variable. All right, let's continue on. A stationary store charges $8 to pr print logos on paper purchases. The total cost, C, is the price of paper, which is going to be represented as P, plus the $8 for printing the logo. For numbers 2A minus 2D, select true and false for each statement. So these are my ones I'm going to select true or false for. The total cost, C, depends on the price of the paper. Well, that is true because if the price of the paper is $5, it's going to be very different than the price of the paper being $8, which is currently is in the, in the scenario right now. C is the dependent variable. That is also true because C is the cost. Remember I told you the answer is the dependent variable. P is the independent variable. That is also true because the paper is what you, ha you have to multiply the amount by that paper in order to find out how much it's going to cost, right? The equation that represents the relationship between the variables is C equals 8P. That is false. The actual should have been the total cost, right? So our total cost, it says paper plus 8. So it's paper plus 8 not paper times eight. An electrician charges $75 an hour for labor and the initial fee of $65. The total cost C equals 75 times the number of hours, which is X plus 65. Write an equation for the relationship and then use the equation to complete the table. So my equation is gonna be C equals 75X plus 65. The reason I got that is because it's $75 an hour, right? Times the number of hours, which is X, so there's my 75, my X, plus the initial fee of $65. So now, if I plug in, um, for the X, if I plug in one for one hour, I'm gonna get, whoops, I'm going to get, <laughs> it just wants to take that all off. I'm gonna get 140 because I've got C equals 75 times the 1, because I'm going to plug in for X, I'm going to put the 1, plus 65. So 75 times 1 is 75, plus 65 is 140. So now instead of 1, I'm going to plug in a 2. So if I do that, 2 times 75 is 150, plus 65. 5 plus 0 is 5. 5 and 6 is 11. 1 and 1 is 2, so I should get 215. And then you already saw this one. I kind of did it already. Sorry about that. But if I now plug in a 3 there, okay, I do 3 times 75 plus 65, and it's 290. If I take off this 3, now I'm going to plug in the 4. I get this. I get <clears throat> 75 times 4, which is 20, 28, 29, 30. So I get 300, and then I get 300 plus 65 is going to be 365. The community center offers classes in arts and crafts. There is a registration fee of $125 and each class costs $79. The total cost or C equals 79 times the number of classes in plus 125. Okay, so let's just think about that. The They offer, it's $79 a class, so it's $79 per class, right? And the total cost, actually maybe the total cost equals 79 times, actually we'll do in, they want us to call this in, so we're gonna say the cost equals 79 in, okay, plus 
that registration fee of 125, right? So let's answer these questions. We're going to select true or false. The registration fee is 120. Well, let's look up here. Plus 125. So no, that's false. N is the independent variable. Well, is N the thing that I'm multiplying by to get something? Yeah, so that's true. C is the dependent variable. Again, is C my answer? Yeah, C is my dependent variable. For the total cost, or the cost for seven classes is 678. Well, let's try it. Let's plug it in and find out. So instead of an N here, I'm going to put 7. So I have 79 times 7 plus 125. So 79 times 7, 7 times 9 is 63, 7 times 7 is 49, plus 6 is 55, plus I have to add the $125 registration fee, and I get 8, 7, I get 678, and they said it's 678, so that should be true. Mrs. Walsh is buying calculators for her class. The table shows the total cost based on the number of calculators purchased. So for one calculator, it was $15. Two calculators, it was 30. Three, it was 45. And four, it was 60. If Miss Walsh spends a total of $525, how many calculators did she buy? Use numbers and words to explain your answer. Well, she bought 35 calculators. And the reason is the pattern or the equation is C equals 15N. Because if you notice, for every 1, it increased by 15, right? Because 15, 30, 45, 60, yeah? So since I know that she spent a total of $525, I can substitute the 525 for C, and I can solve um, 525 equals 5N, so N must be 35, so she bought 35 calculators. The table shows the number of cups of lemonade that can be made from cups of lemon juice. So for every two cups of lemon juice, you get 14 cups of lemonade. For every four cups of juice, you get 28 cups of lemonade. For every five cups of juice, you get 35. For every seven cups, you get 49. Mary Beth says that the number of cups of lemon juice, J, depends on the number of cups of lemonade, L. She says that the equation J equals 7L represents the relationship between the cups of lemon juice, J, and the cups of lemonade, L. Is Mary Beth correct? Use words and numbers to explain why or why not. Well, Mary Beth is not correct because the number of cups of lemon juice L depends on the number of cups of lemon juice J. So L is the dependent variable and J is the independent variable. The equation showing the relationship between the lemonade and juice should have been L equals 7J. For number 7A to 7D, choose yes or no to indicate whether the points when graphed would lie on a line, <clears throat> would lie on the same line. So if 1, 6, so that, remember this is going over 1, up 6. This is going over 2, up 4. Over 3, up 2. Over 4, and then staying on the same line. Graph paper is going to be needed for this one to actually really see. But the answer to that is yes, they do. The next question, um, again, I would graph these. I would go over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, and so on. And the answer to that one is going to be no. They do not lie on the same line. The next one, once you graph it, so hopefully you guys are pausing the video, you're graphing it, and then you're trying it. The next one would be yes, they do um, end up in a straight line. And the last one is yes, they do end up in a straight line. So again, you know, you're going to need your graph paper, right? And you're going to have to actually graph the points to find out are they in a straight line or are they not in a straight line. Okay, next question is number eight. Graph the relationship represented by the table to find the unknown value. So if we were to graph this, that means we would go, um, on the first one, we go over 40 and up 13, right? So we're going to go over 40 and up 13. So there's my first dot. The next one is over 50 and up 11 and a half. My next one is going to be over 60. And in order for it to fall straight in the line, it's going to be up 10. Okay. And then the last one, just to make sure that our line is good, is over 70 and up 8.5. So over 70 oops, and up 8.5 right here. So anything on this line plot, this line right here, is going to be the answer to the equation. Graph the relationship represented by the table. So 
Time is three hours. The distance is going to be 240 miles. For every four hours, we go 320. For every five hours, we go 400. For every six hours, we go 480. So I'm simply going to just graph it. Three. I'm going to go over three and up to 40. Over three, up to 40. There it is. The next one's four and 320. Over four and up to 320. Five and 400. I'm going to go over five and up to 400. Last one is six and 480. I'm going to go over six and up to 480. Okay, number 10. Miranda's wages are $15 per hour. Write a linear equation that gives the wages W in dollars that Miranda earns in hours. So her wages, so in one hour, she earned $15. Two hours, $30. Three hours, um, $45. And then in four hours, $60. So if it's $15 per hour and we want to know the wages are in dollars, right? And we need to know how many she earns total. Equation would be my wages is W equals 15 times the hour. And double check. So if I had 15, if the hour is 4, 15 times 4 is 60. So that's correct. If I had 3 hours, 15 times 3 is 45. So that's correct. Just a way to kind of double check your work. The table shows the number of apples, or A, that Lucia uses in B batches of applesauce. So for one batch, she uses four apples. For two batches, she uses eight. For three, she uses 12 apples. For four batches, she uses 16. So graph the relationship between the B, the batches, and A, the apples, and then write an equation that shows the relationships. So let's move this out of the way. So on the first one, it's one batch for every four apples. So I'm going to go over one, up four. Two for eight, I'm going to go over two and up eight. Three and 12, I'm going to go over three and up 12. 4 and 6, I'm going to go over 4 and up to 16. So my equation is going to be A equals 4B. So that means for um, to find the total number of apples, I need to multiply 4 times how many ever batches I'm going to do. And double check. 4 times 4 is 16, so that works. 3 times 4 is 12, so that works. 2 times 8 is, or 2 times 4 is 8, and 1 times 4 is 4. So my rule, just like we've been doing our rule, is 4 times and then whatever the B is, right? Delani walks 4 miles per day for exercise. The total number of miles, M, she walks equals 4 times the number of days, or D, she walks. What is a dependent variable? Well, remember the dependent variable is M because that is the total number. So that's the answer. I always think of the dependent variable as it's the answer. The independent variable is what I have to do to get the answer. And in this case, it's D because it's the amount of days that she walks. So I would multiply 4 times the D in order to get how many she walks. So M is going to equal 4 times the D, right? Next one, number 14 or 13. Lacey is staying at a hotel that costs $85 per night. The total cost of Lacey's stay is 85 times the number of nights that she is staying. So if the hotel costs $85 a night, so 85 times the night, then that's going to give me the total cost, right? So now we're going to answer true or false. The number of nights is the dependent variable. The dependent variable is my actual, my, um, my end of everything, right? So that's going to be false. The next one says n is the independent variable. And that's going to be true because that's what I'm multiplying, right? C is the dependent variable. That is true because um, that's my answer. It's the cost. It's the total answer. And the equation is C equals 85n. Well, I kind of gave that one away early enough. So yes, that is true. Okay, number 14. A taxi cab company charges an initial fee of $5 and then $4 per mile for a ride. Use the equation C equals 4X plus 5 to complete the table. So let's write my equation. We have C equals 4 and X. Remember, that's what I'm going to be swapping out. Plus 5. Now, whenever the letter's next to a number, this is really multiplication, right? So it's 4 times. I'm going to plug in something there. So on the first one, I'm plugging in a 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Plus 5 is 13. So my answer on that one is going to be 13. On the next one... I'm plugging in instead of a 2. Now I'm plugging in this uh, 4. So let's plug in the 4. 4 times 4 is 16 plus 5. 
is 21. Next, I'm going to plug in the, um, the 6. So 4 times 6. 4 times 6 is 24, plus 5 <clears throat> is 29. Next, I'm going to plug in my 8. 4 times 8 is 32, plus 5 is 37. A grocery display of cans is arranged in the form of a pyramid with one can on the top row, three in the second row from the top, five in the third row, and seven in the fourth row. The total number of cans C equals two times the row R minus one. The equation C equals two R minus one to complete the table. So again, I'm just going to plug in. So I'm going to make it big here because it's easier. C equals two. And remember, this is R. So I'm going to put a number there. This is my R two times R minus 1. So in the first one I'm plugging in a 5. 2 times 5 is 10, minus 1 is 9. The next one I have plugging in a 6, and I've got 6 times 2 is 12, minus 1 is 11. And the next one I'm plugging in a 7. 7 times 2 is 14, minus 1 is 13. And in the last one I'm plugging in an 8. 8 times 2 is 16, minus 1 is 15. Okay? Number 16, the graph shows the number of words Mason reads in a given amount of minutes. If Mason continues to read at the same rate, how many words will he have read in five minutes? So as I'm looking, in one minute he read 200 words, in two minutes he read 400, in three minutes he read 600, in four minutes he read 800. So if you notice, it's increasing by 200 every single time, and that next straight line point is going to be right here. And if I go right down, yep, five, see my straight line point? It's going to be a thousand. So he's going to read a thousand words in five minutes. Last problem, number 17. Casey claims the linear equation for the relationship shown by the graph is C equals 25J. Use the numbers and words to support his claim. So he's saying if I went over one, I went up 25. Over three, up 75. Over five, up 125. Over seven, 175. So he's saying that for every C, I multiplied 25, or that the total was 25 times um, the jumps. So one jump times 25. Three jumps times 25 gives me 75. Mm, kind of works. Five jumps times three is 125 is what he's saying. Okay, so let's see. The possible answer is 125. So there's his order pairs. So yes, it is true. Because if I do... 3 times the 25, I get the 75. So it works. All right, good luck on your test. Please study tonight. You'll be taking it tomorrow.